2001. I'm in sixth grade, and my Iranian-American Muslim family decides to move to Chelsea Street in Paramus, New Jersey. We share this road with a Chinese Christian pastor, several Reformed Jews, an Orthodox rabbi, and Pakistani Sunni Muslim doctors. Basketball is how I'm introduced to my neighbors. Driveway pickup games led to exchanging home-cooked meals during Ramadan and holiday cards during Passover and Christmas. Life on Chelsea Street humanized who we were to each other, so that when 9/11 happened that fall, we all still saw the best in people. Fast forward to 2017, the year after the U.S. presidential elections, and the Anti-Defamation League reported a 57% rise in anti-Semitic incidents, while the Council on American-Islamic Relations highlighted a 91% jump in anti-Muslim bigotry in the first half of 2017 alone. To discuss this wave of hate, to ultimately combat this wave of hate. I invited my friends over for dinner. I called it Shabbat Salam, combining words for the Jewish Sabbath and the Arabic greeting that also means peace. To bring the most orthodox voices to the table, I realized that I needed to host halal and kosher foods in the same space. But that's that's a logistical nightmare. And that's really, really expensive. At interfaith events I attend, I see kosher on one side, halal on the other. Here we were celebrating our commonalities, only to separate ourselves because of our dietary differences. But it got me thinking: Could I bring the halal and kosher meat production,、uh, halal and kosher process, together? According to religious scholars, from、uh, Baghdad to Damascus, in these ancient communities, our halal and kosher customs have intertwined. They've come together, and our values intertwine because these faiths believe that you must consume healthy foods, as your body is God's gift to humanity, and. All that are living must be respected, whether it's a plant or an animal. Food is holy. Kosher has been part of American society since before this country was even founded, but it's a story Muslims can relate to today. Now, kosher certification is on more than 40 percent of all new foods. It's the most popular type of labeling, even over allergy warnings. In fact, most consumers are not religious Jews; they're the general public. Following halal means trusting regional providers, because Muslims have not yet built out a scale. But Muslims have not built out a, a certification system to the scale of kosher's. Despite being almost half the size of the religious Jewish population, America's three and a half million Muslims have grown halal foods into a twenty billion dollar market. Much of that is due to one of the most educated consumer groups in this country: Muslim women. This is the scale that we're talking about. These dual certified products could be called interfaith foods. And they could help our kosher certification better market to a rapidly growing Muslim population, while helping Muslim、uh, the the Muslim certification process、uh, on bigger name food brands. Most of all, it would make these foods more accessible. Meat is the most complicated food to make both kosher and halal, so that's where I started. In spring 2017, I jumped into my 1979 VW bus, fuel injected. If anybody's wondering, and I started going up and down the Pacific Coast, asking food experts, religious leaders, is it possible to combine the kosher and halal meat production process? First, 
beyond the religious complexities for a second, I wanted to learn more about creating the most sustainable food products. As a former public health practitioner, I know that our industrialized food production has polluted our waterways, it's decimated our soil health, it's literally added tons and tons of greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere. And let's not forget our antibiotic resistant future that awaits us, that will probably lead towards zombie apocalypse. You know, it's, it's scary stuff. But the reality is that it's not livestock that's causing this damage. It's us. How we produce, how we consume. Meat has become synonymous with factory farming. And to a certain extent, it should be. Because 99% of the industry works this way. 99%. That's, that's like almost 100%. That's a lot. How do we screw it up? How do we make it this bad? Especially since we know that there's another way of doing this. I meet American ranchers who put their livestock on pasture, who follow regenerative agriculture, who know about this natural process to allow their livestock to graze and poke and poop. To recycle the nutrients in the grass, to help sequester the carbon, capture carbon out of the sky and put it back into the soil to build carbon soil. When we better learned about this relationship, we made a commitment that all our food products, meat and beyond, would follow this. Now, from a religious standpoint, I had faced initial pushback. But soon, I found myself in front of a shochet, who's a Jewish professional who oversees the kosher meat production process and his Muslim equivalent. And we chatted about the differences in halal and kosher meat production and the commonalities. And we realized that, yeah, this is better for our ecology. This is better for our public health if we merge these two methods. Who knew? I did. <laughs> so we came together on a Christian-owned barn in southern Oregon. And we produced the first kosher and halal interfaith meat. Interfaith meat, you can clap. <laughs> Interfaith meat helps food providers, from caterers, any caterers in here, restaurant owners, airlines, target multiple communities with the same inventory, saving time, money, space, even food waste. But this is beyond just meat. At universities, a Muslim college student can now get her meal from a kosher and halal dining hall and sit next to her Jewish classmates for three meals a day over four years. How's that for peace building? Since our inception, more than 1,000 attendees have participated at our Shabbat Salaam events. From San Francisco, our first one was in the Mission, to New York's Times Square, this photo here. When they realize that these ancient dietary laws can merge, their first question is, what else can we bring together? Because when a more established immigrant community better understands Another one, we tackle anti-Semitism and anti-Muslim bigotry more effectively. We build a longer table, not a taller fence. After our Shabbat Salaam events across the country, our attendees tell us, hey, where can we get this interfaith meat? And up until that point, we had really only thought about hosting these events, bringing people together, talking, and putting into action 
to be able to fight this rise in bigotry. But shout out to our attendees who inspired us to bring to market interfaith meat through Abe's Meats. This year, we look forward to launching our crowdfunding campaign and to marketing our products across channels. Abe's does not plan to be the future of meat production. In fact, we may be one of the few meat companies, if maybe if only, to openly preach responsible meat consumption by saying very clearly, buy less, better meat. Buy less industrialized food products, meat and beyond. Buy local, buy pasture raised, buy grass fed. And anything else that follows this regenerative method. While interfaith meat is our starting block, our end goal is to use more high quality foods to make our spaces more inclusive. There's conversations right now about you know, representation matters. Representation matters on our movie screens and across Hollywood mediums. Well, should we ha be having this conversation as well at our dinner tables? I'm so happy to see my childhood, Chelsea Street, and every pop-up Shabbat Salam that we host. These ideals, these events, follow our ideals and commandments to love thy neighbor as thyself. Thank you.